Oh, let's roll with it then. Okay. Hi, I'm here with Paul Kander. How you doing tonight? Good. You're going to have to get that close because my voice is shot here. Killer set tonight. Yeah, we have killer. Wonderful band. How, 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 it, it's a beautiful band. Once we learn all the parts, it'll be great. <laughs> I think you're doing fine, believe it's me. Part of the charm. Uh, the charm has lasted for many, many years. It's something that uh, I've grown up on. And uh, I guess my first question for you is uh, you're involved a lot in the. Uh, Looking into outer space there for a minute. Yeah, I saw in, something up there. Do you think Carl Sagan should be our next president? No, he's too serious. His wife's a bitch. Timothy Leary. Uh, who would want to be president? This is like the worst time in history to be president. You can accomplish nothing. You have nothing at your disposal. Somebody else is running the whole show. You, yeah, but but yet you seem the to be like... have no power anymore. Yeah. I don't know they ever did. Power. We just know that they don't. But who has more power, the, the president or the people? Corporations. People have no power. Can the people get power? Not yet. How long do you think it will take? Until they uh, get money out of elections. Do you think that this tour will make more people aware of the power that they oh, might hold? No, we're just out here to offer a little alternative quantum universe to the age of darkness ahead of us and chaos. Dark ages are coming. I hope it's not dark ages. It's dark ages. You're involved a lot in the educational system. There's nothing wrong with chaos, though. I love anarchy and chaos are two different things, aren't they? Uh, no, the Greeks translated chaos into both anarchy and a secondary meaning with great opportunities at your feet. It's China, the Chinese did have the same thing. So you can co concentrate on one or the other. Ideally, that's a balance. But there's great changes coming down that, it, that could be scary. Uh, they're hard to tell what, they're, what they are, but they're going to be very big, just like the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union. America's sort of applauding like, like <laughs> democracy won, like it's the Super Bowl or something, right? right? right. <laughs> but but that whole wave Hooray for capitalism. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. that whole wave is is just about to hit here before the end of the century, and it's going to be strikingly striking in a very uniquely American way. And I haven't quite the foggiest idea of the details yet, but the wave is so obvious that you need better get a surfboard. Isn't it our responsibility to shape what comes though? Oh, you're not going to have control of it any more than the Berliners did or the Russians did or the Chinese are going to have. Tiananmen Square was just a little hint of what's the chaos that's going to hit there. It's going to be difficult for a while. That, so it'd be wise to guard, guard yourself for, uh, for constructive uh, criticism of the situation. <laughs> just yeah, a word to the wise. It could go that way. It or, should be obvious if you, or, if you pray and meditate or do any of that sort of stuff. And you have a God, if he's worth anything at all, he'll give you a few hints about what's coming. And I'd take notice. Well, in a lot of ways, though, you have helped shape, you know, chaos. the way people, that chaos in a lot of ways, but a good chaos, a positive force. Well, you need a positive force within the chaos to sustain you. We're one of many little, little contributors to that, hopefully, in most cases. Well, I think it was like the togetherness of the 60s in certain ways. It broke apart, and do you see... Well, I don't know that we were ever together. together. Nobody was ever together in the 60s. A lot of people experimenting and finding paths that hadn't existed before and tr trying to tread them. Getting whacked on the head a lot for trying, but continuing to try and not giving up. Do you think we're the mature worst. enough to bring our children into a better future and guide them? And not necessarily, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why you need positive forces to help you along these paths. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> I'm going to send out for some. Short of a major change in the DNA code, humanity's like to go, to go on as fucked up and, and as stupid as it ever was. On one level, there are moments of brilliance and brightness and, and things to be done and things to be had. But the race as a whole it, it has, a, has a dark side. <laughs> right. It needs to be recognized. And Del, I don't know that you can change it. Well, you've been able to capture a lot of those moments of brilliance, Paul. I, I got to wow. say that I, you you've inspired quite a few people. Let's face it, you know, and and it it is people like yourself that are in the media and what have you that I do feel like a certain responsibility to keep turning people on to that type of flaw. I would encourage the space program, for example. It's like one of the major. It's almost a very evolutionary step, like fire or the wheel. Uh, it's even bigger than fire, the wheel, actually, because you're you're getting off the planet. As uh, Timothy says, uh, you're exiting the womb, in a sense, the sort of protective womb of the atmosphere of the Earth.
once you get out into space beyond gravity and beyond air, uh, your whole physiology of your body is going to change. You, know, you lose your calcium when you go out into space. Why? They don't know. You have to deal with things like that. It's going to be a whole new world. Maybe it's because there's no space cows. I don't know. No, it's just a thought I had. But we don't know. There's a million things like that. It's, it's, uh, you know, we used to have, when I was growing up, we dreamed of walking on Venus and Mars. You know, whatever happened to the space projects? Whatever happened to that glory that everybody felt? You know, it's gone. It's like, uh, it's not gone, but it's been crushed by economic forces that choose to use their money in other ways. Well, that's, and uh, uh, the, the amount of things that come just from the space project, from farming and weather prediction and medical advances and uh, robotic advances and technological, meteorological. I mean, there's millions of things that, that are helping us now that most people aren't really aware of that have come directly from the space programs. Well, well, the Earth, as Carl Sagan would say, is a big spaceship in a lot of ways. Uh, unfortunately, nobody's driving. Yeah, that, well, the people that are driving are letting on. It's, it's like you're in a spaceship and you're, you want to go up and see the pilot, and you go into the door and you can't even find the door, you know, and there's no driver's seat. So that, that illusion only holds true to a certain point. Yeah, you know, everybody would like a driver. Some people have God, some people have Krishna, some people have Buddha, some people have the Ayatollah, some people have Pee Wee Herman. Uh, as my giving favorite, them yeah. advice and, uh, and, and following directions. Uh, but there is no driver, and ultimately the driver is inside here. And, and uh, the concept of Spaceship Earth, while interesting, doesn't really apply to the nth degree because there ain't no driver. There are those that would say, though, we can escape the Earth uh, through our minds. They're full of shit. <laughs> That's right, because it takes to run them over and tan them in square no matter what. Yeah. How about um, the existence of uh, UFOs or extraterrestrial Pan beings? these days is not mightier than the sword. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's better than the sword. They compete on, on levels at times now and again that are interesting. They can't compete with a tank, but, for uh, example. Well, yeah, the yeah. guy in Tiananmen Square did pretty good. Although I heard they hauled him off and shot him later, so it's hard. He, he, he projected a good image for people to hold on to. And we need martyrs. Well, I, 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 for, I, for one, have to congratulate President Bush and like the way he's handling the whole situation personally, because you know we shouldn't make friends with these bastards. But um, oh, and, uh, he gets along. No, well, I think totally. The forces will, will take that over eventually. I'm hoping. I, I think. What do you think is rock and roll as a worldwide means of communication? Rock and roll is lightweight stuff. It's, it's yeah, a, just to get a message. It's, it's, it's entertainment. It's mild elimination. It poses no severe threat to the powers that be, they don't think. But it's poetry, sort of. <clears throat> you lose your voice sometimes when you do it. Well, you were cranking them out tonight, I'll tell you that much. But um, as, as a force of communication, I, I maybe you underestimate oh, well, how powerful that well, force is. Better to underestimate than overestimate. And think too much of yourself, yeah. Well, the Stay message humble. may be may be more important than than the self in a lot of ways. And certain, uh, you can't compare Guns N' Roses to the album Blows Against the Empire, for example. I'm sure you can. Well, you can on a uh, commercial on Billboard. They're both round. Right, right. They have a hole in the middle, and it's too small, except for me. But uh, other than that, the, um, the Blows Against the Empire. I know from when people pick that album up. It was a mind bender. It was more than like a Hugo science so fiction. So you can award. imagine what it was for us like for us making it. <laughs> Believe me, I spent many an hour imagining that. <laughs> yeah, um, that must. What was that like? I, you had an incredible personnel in that. Why water rafting? <laughs> you, basically, Without, you basically get on the raft and then uh, hang on and try to keep it under some sort of control. And don't kill yourself or fuck it up completely. Um, the uh, rock and roll orchestra album seemed to be like a predecessor to that, or like a sequel to Blows Against the Empire. That's in a lot the right of word. Precursor? No, not predecessor. Oh yeah, after it that, was sort of an alternative, actually. Right. That was in the sense that uh, the uh, Blows Against the Empire hadn't occurred by 1980, 90, whatever it was. So here's an alternative group of people doing an all. It's just an alternative universe. There's many alternatives to getting off the planet. Right. If we can get off the planet before we blow it up. I don't think we're gonna blow it up now, it doesn't look like. 
the way we could all starve to death. <laughs> Except we'll for blow a few it corporations. Up, starve to death, you know. Maybe we could blow it up and have a big roast off or something, but the um, is there is this gonna be a trilogy now? Now there's a future pl a future I never plan these yeah. things. I am the funniest thing. Mostly, no mostly right now I'm writing about a uh, woman serial killer of Republicans. Started out one, as one song and now she's taken over about three. It's a great fantasy, I think. She has a, well, it's, it's Swiftian content. <laughs> and uh, it elicits a chuckle where a chuckle's needed. Because if you if you look at the situation today, really the only two alternatives you have are terrorism or alcoholism. If you really want to accomplish something and deal with the circumstances around you. I haven't found a third ism that's really effective. Well, Paul, you have been doing the third ism for many, many years, and I, I will say your message has turned on a lot of people. And you know, you. Well, I, after work. after my involvement with Nicaragua and Oliver North and all that business, I was ready to go into the mountains and become a full-op terrorist. I realized, being the clumsy person that I am, that I'd probably shoot my leg off or something like that. And fortunately, I have an outlet in song, which is in certain ways more effective. But it would have been very satisfying to just. Uh, I had one song where I just go and hang all the senators and congressmen in Washington from phone poles. Start over. Could I do the video of that? I'd love to do the that video. Be good. I'd like to get the hang real them all, hang them high from the phone poles in Washington. Or imprison them all in a shopping mall that goes where they can shop for eternity. That's a great idea. As a matter of fact, if you set that up, I think we get funding for it. I could get funding for it. <laughs> I know all my friends would chip in. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there's a couple of empty malls around here that uh, would be just the perfect place for those guys. You know, I was writing that song about the archives, and it's interesting that Oliver got it brought off before I got the song even finished uh, with them opening up the Kennedy archives. Oliver's one of the good effects now, Oliver Stone. Oh, Oliver Stone. Right. Ah. Yeah, Don't forget Oliver. Write him a letter, say thank you. That, Any that people doing shit like that, bothering them. Adolescent, but effective. And that's where you kind of fit in, too. We have yeah, our part. Yes, we're very adolescent about things. <laughs> well, it's perfect, though. Adolescent, in a lot of ways, though, uh, is innocent and also um, the rash. Are taking chances. Fucking up. But taking chances. The whole 60s was really an adolescent reaction to the uh, killing of Kennedy. Or more importantly, to the Warren Commission report on Kennedy and the killing. I can understand the killing. But being educated as well as we were, uh, having him expect us to accept that kind of garbage is sort of insulting, if nothing else. You know, it's like uh, it's like Marcos in the Philippines telling everybody it's always the communists that are doing the bad things. I didn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, it's so obvious. It's pathetic. Well, well, aren't the communists bad? Of course. <laughs> um, kind of as like bad as Republicans. <laughs> Well, you know, let's let's not um, shortchange the Democrats or you know anybody yeah. else in the Congress or the House in a lot of ways. Well, that's what my serial killer Republican says. There's a few Democrats she could add to her list too. Once she gets finished with the Republicans. <laughs> well, isn't it the old story about the uh, guy that was uh, had cornflakes in his mouth and uh, bananas in his ears and was lying dead on the side of the street? I don't remember that in Plato. Oh yeah, they said it was a serial killer. Yeah, bad. <laughs> On that note, I see my man leaving, and I'm not going to be stuck here walking home in the snow. Paul, thanks so much, man. Hey, Paul. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, see you next year. Okay, man. <laughs> Take care. Bye, away. Thank you.